Okay, good morning Year 10 and welcome to your first um, Preparing for Year 11 Assembly. Uh, before we start, I just wanted to make a quick point. I was really disappointed to see that someone in the waiting room had something other than their name as, as what they were called. That person has not been allowed entry to this assembly and that will continue throughout all of these assemblies and all of the lessons. So it's really important please to make sure that you have um, titled yourself correctly for anything you attend on Zoom. So this is going to be the first in a series of assemblies we're going to have over the next term. Can I remind you once again to ensure that you've signed into the assembly by sending me a private chat message with your full name. This is how I'm going to monitor your attendance to, to this assembly and subsequent assemblies. So for those of you who don't know, I'm the Year 11 Raising Standards Leader. And as we come to the end of uh, the current Year 11 time as Year 11, it's time for me to start working with you all. So what my job entails is supporting you and um, providing you with a series of opportunities which will enable you to maximise your potential and achieve the grades that you need in summer of 2021. Uh, but we'll speak a little bit more about that in a moment. We're going to hear from some key members of staff in this assembly and it's really important please that you pay attention and you take note of what is said. So first of all, we're going to hear from Mr Chidwick. Before we do that, I'm just going to admit some others from the waiting room. Okay, Mr Chidwick. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Miss Hanmore. Morning, everyone. I hope you're well. I'm going to outline some expectations, very basic expectations, which uh, a lot of us have been following in our daily practice anyway. But these are things that going ahead, we really need to make sure we're doing so we can get the most out of our home, home learning ready for when we return to school. So the first thing, attendance at house briefings each morning with your heads of house. You've been attending these. That's brilliant. You need to make sure you continue to do that so that you can get key information from your heads of house. Also from term six, you're going to be receiving daily briefings from uh, two of the senior leadership team, from Mr. Dimitri and Mrs. Miller. These are going to be key, you're going to get key information about academic progress, academic work, and things that you need to be doing during your home learning and preparation for coming back to school. So you should join these every morning to hear that information. You'll also need to continue to use your emails. They will be a source of direction and information for you. Invitations to live lessons and messages from your teachers will be found here. So that's it, you continue to do that. And just like at school, we will be monitoring attendance and uh, will support you in participating in remote learning. You need to be attending your Zoom lessons and completing your work as much as you possibly can so you keep up to date with what's going on. Your teachers have been working hard, as you know, to produce some brilliant lessons for you so you can continue to work hard and make progress in your subjects. You need to make every effort to complete the work set. In the lesson, the live lessons, where there's questioning, you should engage in that in the chat. You need to complete assessments that you're, you have set, so mini assessments and quizzes and tests that you had. You're also going to have a key assessment in term six, which is a bit like your end of year exam, where we're going to test what you've learned. Again, there's nothing to worry about, and you'll hear more about that later on. And we're going to be using Microsoft Teams as directed by your teachers. So more on that in coming assemblies. As always, if you have any questions, you need to ask your teachers via email. And also, as you see there, remember to compose your emails appropriately. So you follow that guidance when contacting your teachers and any questions do ask. And I think importantly at the bottom there, you can see work hard, but you also need to look after yourselves. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to Ms. Hamill. Thank you, Mr. Chidwick. Okay, so as I previously mentioned, I'm going to be here with you over the next 12 months. I'm gonna be supporting you and providing you with um, opportunities uh, that will primarily close any gaps in your knowledge and um, enable you to improve the progress that you make. So in return, I expect you to fully engage and fully participate in any opportunity that you're given. And you need to make sure you're taking some ownership and some responsibility for your own learning. So some of the opportunities that, we've, um, that I've talked about. So the first thing um, worth mentioning is that period one is going to look very different for you in assembly. So each week you have one pastoral day in form. And those will be filled with things like assemblies with me, with uh, relationship and sex education, with revision techniques, stress management, and a whole host of other things uh, that are going to benefit you. The other four days, you'll either be in an intervention class or you'll be in a revision class. Um, we'll speak in a lot more detail about what those classes entail in subs uh, subsequent assemblies, but just to make you aware, period one is incredibly important for you next year. So it's vital that you arrive to school on time. It's vital that you participate fully in those sessions. 
There will also be a period six programme, so that will be after school revision that's available to you. Some sessions are going to be open to all students, some will be invite only, and again we'll talk about that in more detail um, in term six. There will also be whole year group masterclasses. So what those masterclasses will do is focus on any areas identified by your core subjects and, and your option subjects, and they'll help you to make progress. You'll also look at exam technique, and it's also going to prepare you for the environment in which you're going to sit your final exams, because they'll be done on exam desks, in silence, in the hall or, or another large room. So our current year 11 have um, fed back to us that those masterclasses were absolutely invaluable to them. On top of this, there'll be holiday revision opportunities. Again, can't give you any more detail about that now, but we'll speak more about that in September and when we run up to, um, in the run up to the various holidays through the year. And that's all from me for, for today, uh, but I'll be in touch about our next assembly soon. And I'm gonna hand over now to Mrs. Thompson. Good morning, Year 10. It's great to see so many of you here and so early on a Monday morning. I hope you had a great weekend. Before I start, I do just want to say well done to all of you who are really fully engaging in your Zoom lessons. For some of you in math have been going on for quite a while and you're actually doing really, really well as a department. We are super impressed by your engagement, how serious you take it and how much it's helping your education. So I wanted to say well done for that first. Now, I know that some of you are worried about what next year will bring. And so some of my points are to hopefully put your mind at ease where that is concerned. The first thing is, um, and I know that I've spoken to some of you already about this, is I will be spending the summer having a look at our curriculum because <clears throat> we need to make sure that you're going to focus on the key topics. So I'll be analysing past papers to find the key areas that appear every year. Make sure you've had all of the opportunities to um, embed those into your long term memory before we move on and have a look at all of the other stuff that might be on the paper. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do for you. Uh, Miss Hamill's already touched on this, the intervention programme. So um, I, with Miss Hamill, Miss Hughes and Miss Allison will work out students who will attend intervention and it's, and it's full on. Your lessons are going to be very full on. We've got a lot to pack in. So you need to be working really, really hard and keep up and listening to the teacher and doing everything that's asked. You're going to have after school revision and half term revision and, and a bit like Miss Hamill said, we don't know until it gets here what that will look like. Depends on when we go back to school, depends on what any assessments show us. It's all informed by what you are doing in and out of the classroom before we get there. Um, our fortnightly assessments are going to continue. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's really important that these are taking seriously. If nothing else, what this year has shown us that when you have an, an assessment, it's really important you treat it like the real thing. Now, because of where we are at the moment, those fortnightly assessments will be really important for your teachers to know what you have um, embedded into your memory so that they don't need to worry about that anymore. So that gives them more time to work on all of the other aspects that you might need to learn. So really important that you take those seriously. Thank you, Ms. Hamwell. <clears throat> right, now this is, this is more about how you can help yourself. As the Maths Department, you know we're gonna work incredibly hard to get you the best results that we can, but that's only gonna work if you do some things. So we're launching in September a drop-in clinic. And this is just going to happen at lunch times. The teachers will be in various classes and you can just come along and ask for help. It can be on something to do with homework. It can be something to do with what was in a lesson or it could be something that you've decided you might like to learn because you think it's going to help you in your, assess in your exam. It doesn't matter what it is. OK, it's up for you, but you need to use this. You need to take advantage of this clinic. Hegarty Maths, and I know I can hear groans from some of you, all right, but it really, really helps. And what's going to be key, I think, for all of you is that you do five minutes every day. And all that means is just going on there, going on to a basic 
quiz and just doing the quiz. If you don't get 100%, then you need to know that you need to do a little bit more on it at some point. But doing five minutes each day helps to embed all that basic knowledge into your long-term memory, making those more difficult questions easier to tackle because the foundations are already there. So please, please make sure you are engaging with this and also completing the tasks that your teacher sets, which will be different for each one of you because your teachers do use it slightly differently. The last point for me is what's most important. Okay, communicate. You need to communicate with us. If you are struggling with something, you need to tell us. If you think it's too easy, you need to tell us. If you want whatever it might be from us, then you need to tell us. We don't know if you don't tell us. That's really, really important. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to very briefly just tell you what the exams are made up of. They're much more straightforward than the, the exams for English and science because, first of all, you don't have as many of them. And secondly, it's all about anything you've learned in maths. The key is that they are an hour and a half long. There are three of them. Paper one is non-calculator, so it tends to have um, easier numbers because they're looking at methods rather than the actual calculations. Whereas on paper two and paper three, they're both calculator papers, so they chuck in horrible numbers to make it a little bit harder. Paper three is a big problem solving question, so that's when you tend to get all the words um, so they're the big, big questions which earn you the big marks. So that's a very quick overview of what your exams in maths looks like. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to Miss Allison. Good morning, everybody. I just want to echo what Mrs Thompson has just said and say that the English department have been incredibly proud of the way that you've engaged, of the way that you've attended our lessons and the way that you're learning at home because it's not easy and you're doing such a fantastic job. So I just want to start by saying, because there's always confusion about this, that in English, you get two separate GCSEs. You get one in English literature, which is where you are assessed on text that you've studied. So we're going to be doing Romeo and Juliet and a Christmas Carol. That's in paper one. And then in paper two, we're doing Inspector Calls, the Poetry Anthology and Unseen Poetry. Now you'll see in green there that we studied A Christmas Carol in Term 1 and 2 of Year 10 and we started the Poetry Anthology and you're finishing that off at home. So they're the two bits that we've already done. The second paper is English Language. Okay, uh, Mrs Hamill, can I have the next slide please? Thank you. Um, and again, there's two papers here, but I just want to reiterate again, this is a completely separate GCSE. Um, this time you're given extracts that you've never seen before. Paper one is one fiction extract. You have four reading questions and then you have to produce a piece of writing. And then paper two is two non-fiction extracts. You again do four reading questions and one writing question. So you can see that in lessons already, we've covered the reading questions. And then my plan is that we cover the paper two writing question at the end of this year. So in term six, that will be your next booklet. So my key messages really, um, and how I want you to be engaging at home is that it's really important that you're completing the work we set you to the highest possible standard. Now at the moment, you're covering your poetry anthology. And I just want to really make it clear that we won't have the lesson time to go through all 15 poems again. So it's really important that you use the videos that I'm uploading onto Teams, that you're annotating those poems, that you're going through your booklet and comp completing the activities. Because although we'll have some revision time in year 11, the curriculum time is, is, is too tight to cover the 15 poems again. So we're trying to give you everything you can to complete those poems at home. And obviously we'll be helping you as well with our, our live lessons. The other thing that's really, really important that you be doing at home is writing practice. Now paper two of your literature exam is two hours and 15 minutes long. 
that is an awful long time to be writing non-stop. And I always use the analogy and I have students laughing at me. Unfortunately, I can't see your faces. So I'm sure you'll be laughing at this image. But if I was gonna run a marathon, I would die, okay? It wouldn't happen, everybody. And if you guys tried to write for two hours and 15 minutes non-stop, you wouldn't die, but you, would, you wouldn't be able to do it, okay? Because it's a really long time, your hand would hurt, you know, you'd get fed up. So it's really important that you build that stamina. So you start at home by writing 45 minute responses, making sure you're timing yourselves and they're set out in your booklet for you. So it's really important that you do those, you time yourself for 45 minutes and you send those off to your teacher. It's also important guys that you consider spaced practice and retrieval because now that in your now that you're in your year 10 you need to start thinking about revision and if you don't revisit what you've learned you're very very quickly going to forget it so you need to think about right can I today for half an hour go back and do a little bit of work on a Christmas carol Shall I read a chapter? Shall I answer some questions that Mrs. Allison has put on the website? Because if you don't go and revisit that content, you're not gonna remember it. You need to make sure it's quickly accessible in your exam. So you need to start thinking about revising previous topics as well as the poetry anthology that we're doing at the moment. The final thing I've just put up here, and, and I won't, you know, cover all of them with you because you're going to get this um, in an email, this assembly. But I've just put some ways that you can revise at home. A couple that I just want to point out to you are the Mr. Bruff videos on YouTube. They are absolutely brilliant. OK, so if you're sick of looking at my face in my videos, which you may well be, go and have a little look at Mr. Bruff. He's got um, lessons on all of our poems, all of our texts and the language exams. And making sure that when we do return to school, that you're using every single minute of lesson time productively. And even at home, every minute of English time you're using productively because time is short and we need to make sure that we're using that time absolutely to its best. Thank you, everybody. And I'll pass on to Miss Hughes. Hello everybody, um, I'm just going to initially talk about the um, exam structure in science because that's quite um, different in comparison to uh, English and maths um, and then I'll come back to talk about what we're doing at the moment and, and how we're going to um, move forward to ensure that you guys get the um, best opportunities um, that you, that we can provide to you. So the first thing is the um, combined science overview so one of the things that um, I know from this year that a lot of the year 11s still um, aren't 100% sure about until we get to the October um, half term is is how many exams you actually have so I want to inform you guys now so that you can start to think and prepare um, yourselves for this so in science if you are doing combined you will have six papers that's two papers in each of the um, specialities, so biology, chemistry and physics. And um, you will be, sitting, each one of them will be an hour and 10 minutes in time and they are equally weighted, so 60 marks each. So if you're really good in one science um, subject and you're not so good in another, uh, it will balance out over the three of them and you'll end up getting two grades in your combined sciences. And that will be uh, determined due to an average over all six of those papers. Um, and with regards to combined science you can sit a foundation paper and you can sit a higher paper the foundation paper you will be able to get a maximum a uh, grade five and in the um, higher paper can't get below a level four otherwise you won't be graded so don't worry about that now because we don't have to make any decision about whether or not you're sitting a higher or a foundation paper until we come to um next year but this is something that we'll be monitoring as we go through to work out which one would be best suited for you and um, to ensure that you get yourself to the grade that you possibly can so then moving on to the uh, separate 
So you will also be sitting six papers. However, you will have slightly more content for each one of those papers. And so they're actually an hour and 45 minutes in length. They are all equally weighted at 100 marks. You will sit two papers in each of the subjects again. So all three of those sciences. But in this case, what you'll end up getting are three separate science um, results. So you'll have a, a result for biology, chemistry and physics. So it's three GCSEs in total. And again, we have the same situation with a foundation and a higher paper. But for separate science, you can access a foundation paper, for example, in biology and a higher paper in physics, depending on which one you are best at. So we can play around with that again as we get closer to um, to the exams and we can make a final decision when we get to February. So we will have seen you go through two sets of um, mock papers. We will make sure that you um, have in the October half term, you'll be sitting one mock paper in each of the three sciences. And then when we come to the um, mocks in February, you will sit a whole uh, suite of the papers. So, so we will get a very good idea of what your abilities are and and how far we can sort of push you in terms of which level to put you into so that's an idea uh, as an overview over the the exams that you're going to be sitting so the next bit that i want to talk to you about is is what you are doing now and what we are going to be doing in the future so again i i want to say uh, a little bit about the virtual lessons on zoom so I am, have been really, really pleased to, um, so I'm taking one half of, of the year 10s and there are so many of you that attend those sessions. So that's fantastic and, and you're so engaged and I love looking at the chat to see your answers as we're doing um, questions and getting lots and lots of people sending their work afterwards to get feedback and, and to show me what they're doing. So one of the things I want to just say is, keep that up because that's great but also if you haven't completely engaged in those and you haven't sent work through or anything like that use this time widely you guys are extremely lucky because there are not that many schools in the country who are doing these sort of things so it's it's really great that those of you who are engaging in this and just keep it up um, and you will be in one of the best positions you could possibly be when we come back in September. Um, and, and other schools will not be getting that uh, amount of, of um, virtual lessons. So, so really do use it to your advantage. Um, when we also come back uh, next year, we will be making sure that we go back over the concept that we've covered for year nine and year 10 because they really closely link back into topics we will be covering for the um, sort of paper two content that we'll be moving on to and we'll make sure that we um, embed them the the ideas as we go along using our mini quizzes using the mini assessments where we're not just focusing on one topic at a time we're making sure that we're putting all of these concepts back in and we will be, again, as, um, as maths and English have said, we'll be monitoring um, this over, over, the time, uh, over the time of next year and sort of embedding slightly different things depending on your class and what you're doing in your mini assessments. And then the next thing that I want to come on to is what we'll be doing with you in terms of revision. So with revision, we will be making sure that uh, we're, we're helping you along the way. Sorry, Miss Hamill, on the ne next slide, please. Next slide. There we go. And um, so we will be helping you um, along the way with your revision and guiding you and giving you pointers as to which bits you need um, to do a little bit more work on. And that's where that DIRT lesson that we do after a mini assessment is so vital for you to make sure that you are using that information and um, keeping those DIRT sessions and keeping your assessments. So it's not uh, those sessions are, are not just 
in there for no reason. They're really, really important. And we will be still doing DIRT sessions after the mini assessment that you have this week. And we will continue to do those throughout next year as well. They are really important to help us to identify misconceptions for you and to help you build up an understanding of what parts you weren't so good at initially and that you can work on to improve. The other thing is now is the time for you to be starting to play around with different revision techniques. I've given a couple of examples there and it's, it's this time you can make these mistakes with your revision techniques and, and find ways of improving um, and I would highly suggest you start thinking about that now when we're doing these mini assessments and when we're particularly as we're coming up to the October um, exams the October marks that you will start to have developed your um, revision technique that suits this subject so it may be different for different um, subjects and we can help you with that as we go along um, and as I've said keep those mini assessments keep the cumulative assessments and the feedback and then uh, we will be able to work towards those October mocks and then we will continue to improve after that time as well so you are in a fantastic position at the moment and and you will do really really well and the last thing that i want to move on to is to help you with exam technique so one of the things that is quite easy um, to to not think about because you'll be so focused on the content is actually that the exam technique is really vital for you in science so we'll be guiding you through in master classes how to identify um, command words and questions and how to work and tackle questions like the six markers where there's a specific style of writing that you will need to be working on. So those are all things that we will be um, coming to as, as we get into September and next year when we start to work on these masterclasses. Lots of fantastic opportunities for you and I know that you will be taking those and you'll be working as hard as you are now um, at home with these virtual lessons and we will get you some fantastic results. So well done everybody. I'm now going to pass you over um, to Mr Williams. Good morning Year 10 and uh, good morning to any parents that are listening to this as well. Can I start by saying I'm really impressed that at the moment there are 90 Year 10s that are listening to this assembly so I'm very impressed with those students because you are showing a really positive attitude by logging on this morning and listening. But I want to set you a very quick task because I am sure that there are many of you listening to me right now who knows one of their friends that's not here. Now, I will be very surprised if you're not in contact with some of your friends on a probably a daily basis on some social media platform. So if there is one of your friends that is not listening right now and hasn't logged onto this assembly, you've got a task to make sure that you contact them and remind them. They need to log onto their emails, they need to check their timetables because there will be invites that will be sent out for meetings like this, for assemblies, for lessons, and we need to make sure that all of Year 10 are attending. But fantastic that there's 90 of you listening to this already. And on that, I just want to repeat something that was said at the very start. When you are logging on, please make sure you're using your correct name. Um, get into the routine of doing that. Looking through the participants, there are lots of people that have just got their first and their second name, which is perfect. If you have not got your first and second name listed, then you need to change that on your settings. Whether it's your laptop you're using, whether it's an iPad, whether it's on your phone, you need to change the, your name so that when you log in, you are typing your first name and your second name. And you're going to have to do that before the end of this assembly. You're going to have to privately message Mrs. Hammore now with your full name, because that's how we are going to get a register. But you can see, I've just got to talk about your routine and having a routine is essential. I'm hoping some of you listened to one of the whole school assemblies we did at the end of last term. We were talking about getting into a routine and having a structure to your day. I need you to get up at a certain time. Now, whether or not you get up at 7.30, I'm sure some of you might be smiling right now to think, I'm not sure I do get up at 7.30 unless I'm actually physically going into school, but you need to get yourself up at a time that gives you enough 
of an opportunity to get yourself ready, to get yourself some breakfast, to log on to your school emails so that you are ready to start at nine o'clock every single morning. That is absolutely essential. You have just heard how important year 10 is going to be for you. And then we have got very little of year 10 left before you are in year 11. So getting into that routine is essential. Go to bed at a certain time as well. Do not stay up until 10, 11, 12, maybe even later. I'm sure many of you listening to this right now have done that. What you need to do is get yourself into a home learning routine where you are going to bed at a regular time, not too late, and getting up at a regular time as well, so you are ready for a nine o'clock start. Hopefully you've been listening to your head of house every morning. The head of house briefings have been fantastic. They've been setting you up for the day. They've been telling you what you should be doing. From term six, you will be attending a morning briefing every single day at nine o'clock with either Mrs. Hanmore, who you've heard from today, Mr. Dimitruk, or Mrs. Miller. They are going to be talking to you about important things to do with the end of year 10 and moving on into year 11. So you need to make sure that you are checking your emails and you are accepting those live Zoom invites because they are going to be telling you about some very, very important information. So that is going to be part of your daily routine. Next slide, please, Mrs. Hanmore. Thank you. Now, lots of you, I've just been listening to your English, Maths and Science directors, um, and it's really pleasing. I know that a lot of you have been logging on and attending some live meetings. This may be something very familiar to you. You will have your invite and all you need to do is click that link. So if you haven't done that, I'm trying to make it really easy for you that you follow that hyperlink that I've highlighted in red and that will take you straight to either your daily briefing, as I've said with Mrs. Hanmore, Mrs. Miller or Mr. Dimitrok, or it will take you to a live lesson during the day. But if you know, once again, somebody that's not checking their email, somebody who's not accepting these live Zoom meeting invites, I'm going to ask you, please, can you contact them and say, this is what you need to do? Because we are going to be following up with attendance. Because on the next slide, the last thing I really want to talk to you about is making sure that your conduct in lessons is really good. And I'm going to also talk about your attendance. Now, your microphones are muted now. They're muted by default. Mrs. Hanmore has muted your microphones. Your chat goes straight to Mrs. Hanmore in this meeting and your videos are off. Now, this is the default setting. So this default setting meaning this is the way it's going to be for everybody, unless of course the teacher changes that specifically for you during a lesson. Now, I talk to you at the start of every single term about your behavior, about maintaining very high standards. Please make sure that you maintain these high standards. Follow the morning school way, even when you are online, because everything is recorded online. We have a record of everything. We have a record of who has logged on, who is listening, and we will, if we need to, follow up with any behavior that falls below our very high standards. I'm sure that won't happen, but I just wanted to remind you about making sure your behavior is absolutely brilliant during live lessons or briefings. And it's attendance. Attendance results in better grades. We've said this so many times, when you've had days off school before, you will get a text, you'll get an email. We will follow up with people who are not in school every day. What we are going to start doing now with year 10s is if you are not attending your morning briefings, if you are not attending your lessons, then your house teams, your head of house, your tutors, your guidance managers, they will be contacting you. So this is another reason why I'm going to ask you to contact friends who you might know are not logging on and taking part in live lessons. So please make sure you are attending every day. I'm going to say again, please make sure you are writing your names in the chat to, so a teacher can take a register and make sure that whatever name your device is rec registered as, it is your proper name. It is not just, for example, John's iPhone or Amy's iPad. Please change that. It's an easy thing to change on settings, but your first name and your last name. And the last thing for me is your teachers are working very, very hard to help you. 
think that's very obvious to hear from what Mrs Hughes, Mrs Allison and Mrs Thompson have just said to you for English, Maths and Science. An incredible amount of hard work is going on behind the scenes that your teachers are doing. You have also got to work hard if you want to do as well as possible in year 11. And the fact that 90 of you are logging on and listening to this tells me that you do want to do really well. So take the opportunities that are being given to you, work really hard, follow the Morling School way, even when you are at home and keep maintaining those really high standards. So well done year 10. And to finish, I'm just going to hand over to Mr. Van Art that wants to speak to you briefly. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, I'd just like to echo <clears throat> what everyone said really, that the fact that we've got nearly 100 year 10 students with us this morning um, is just amazing. And um, we speak a lot, uh, we, we do a lot of these meetings with the staff and we do them every other day and um, we keep on saying how impressed we are with the resilience, the courage, the determination of the students and the way you're participating year 10 in the lessons that are offered to you, the way you're working hard and um, showing your, your hard work in these difficult times. We are so, so impressed and I'm extremely proud uh, to be your head teacher. I'll be listening to the um, to the assembly and I've been um, reflecting really on, on what's been said and one thing that I think is really clear to me is that we um, we're really lucky to have such dedicated and talented uh, members of staff supporting us uh, and I think it's really really important um, that we we keep up the, the good work that's doing we keep up get, getting in those um, good learning habits and um, keep on working hard because there's some fantastic work being set and there's some fantastic lessons that have been uh, put online so um so i wanted really to say to year 10 um well done we are very very proud of you um keep going with your hard work and um, keep having those high expectations for yourselves and um we really look forward to seeing you when it's safe to do so keep going and well done and thank you very much uh, everybody